and welcome to Shag Talk. I'm Abby Morris, the president of Inclusivity and Diversity, and today I'm here with... Hi, I'm Craig Moody. I'm here from Yorkshire Mesmark Sexual Health Prevention Services in Hull. Um, so we were just going to kind of talk about general sexual health today, um, STIs and testing. Um, so should we start by just doing some of the most common ones? So the ones that maybe people should be very aware of and should look out for? Absolutely. So the most common STI is chlamydia and the rates of chlamydia are quite high within young people as well, especially people who are under the age of 25. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely something that everybody should be testing for if they are sexually active. Um, there's also other STIs like gonorrhea, syphilis, HIV, all things that people should be testing for as well if they're sexually active. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so how would you notice if you um, did have any of these? Um, so what are the sort of the signs and symptoms that people should look out for? So some of the symptoms that people may have with chlamydia or gonorrhea is, could be discharge from the penis, or a change in discharge from the vagina. Mm -hmm. So vaginal discharge is very normal for people with vaginas. However, if there's any changes to that, whether it's color, smell, consistency, frequency, things like that, then that could be a sign that something's not quite right and very potentially could be chlamydia yeah. or gonorrhea. Could be something else as well, because there are lots of <laughs> things that can cause changes in, in somebody's discharge. Um, could also be things like pain, burning, itching sensations when urinating, um, it could be pain, burning, and itching sensations when having penetrative sex, especially in the vagina or in the anus. Mm -hmm. um, any spotting after sex where there's little bits of blood coming out of the vagina after sex. Um, if people were to catch it in the throat, then potentially they might get a soft throat, but that's about it. Um, one of the big things with chlamydia though is that a lot of people don't get any symptoms. Right, okay. So if 10 people had chlamydia, only seven of those would actually get any, uh, seven of those would even get any symptoms. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So what would you advise then if, if you're not getting symptoms, how would you know? So I would advise that people regularly test. That's the only way people can know if they've got an STI. I'd say if people are in a monogamous relationship and they're only having sex with each other, in that relationship, then they should get a full sexual health screening at least once a year, mm -hmm. just so they're absolutely sure. It's not us saying you shouldn't trust your partner. <laughs> However, we do know that sometimes people stray from relationships. Yeah. So it's just a good way to look after your own sexual health. Um, if people are having regular new sexual partners, then maybe every six months to a year, if they're not always using condoms when they're having sex and having regular new sexual partners, then maybe every three to six months, just mm. to be absolutely sure. Okay, so what would someone do if they were worried? Um, so if somebody was worried, then I'd say access to sexual health service, whether that's giving us a call at Yorkshire Mesmark or popping into see us, whether that's at our office on Free Town Way, or whether that's at our testing droppings that we do at the uni every single Wednesday between one o'clock and four o'clock in the union. Our people can go to Conifer, the sexual health GUM clinic, which is in the city centre, and they're based in the Wilberforce Health Centre on the fourth floor. Amazing. Um, so what, what does actual testing look like? So there's obviously a range of um, STIs, so there must be a range of tests as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So with chlamydia and gonorrhea, general testing is a urine sample test for people with a penis and a vaginal swab test for people with a vagina. If people are having anal sex, then they can do an anal swab test. And if people are having oral sex, then they can do a throat swab test as well. Because one of the things with chlamydia and gonorrhea is they localize their infection sites. Mm. So if somebody is caught chlamydia or gonorrhea in the throat, for example, and then they did a urine sample test, but they didn't have chlamydia or gonorrhea in their penis, mm. then it wouldn't show up on the right, test that okay. they had it in the throat. And a lot of people don't always think about getting those yeah. tests in different sites. Places, yeah. And if somebody has got symptoms, then we always say go see somebody at Conifer just because it's the more appropriate service. We only mm. really see people that don't have any symptoms. Um, and it's better if somebody's got symptoms for a nurse to be able to have a look at them yeah. and just to check everything over. Um, and they can do some more specific tests there mm -hmm. as well. Um, testing for HIV and syphilis are a blood test. So if somebody gets that done with us at Yorkshire Mesmark, it's a fingerprint blood test. That's an instant result. If they get it in that conifer, then it's usually a full blood test from the arm and it might take a week or two for them to yeah. get the results. Okay. Um, um, so for the um, HIV and syphilis test, the finger prick, um, I were, I'm someone that doesn't really like needles or anything like that. Um, so how, what would you kind of recommend to someone or maybe just to ease someone's nerves about that sort of test? So 
When it comes to needles, we sometimes do say to people it might be better to get the finger prick test done just mm. because there's no needle there that they're actually going to see. Yeah. Obviously, when you're getting a blood test in your arm, you're seeing the needle that's going into thing. your arm. Yeah. Whereas when it's a finger prick test, it's what we call a lancet. So it's a tiny little thing that we just press on the finger and there's a mechanism, mechanism in it. I can't say that word. <laughs> um, and it just sort of stabs the finger ever so slightly. It's never as bad as people think mm. it's going to be. Whenever I see people and they're quite anxious about getting a finger prick done, especially if they've not had it before or they have needle phobias, 99.9% .9 of the time people say to me afterwards, that was nowhere near what I thought it was yeah. going to be like. It's just a little scratch on the finger and then we get enough blood from there. Amazing. Um, so what sort of support would be then available for maybe someone after the test? So whether it did come back positive or just the aftermath of yeah. that. So when somebody comes to see us at Mesmac, we do pre and post test support. So we talk to people a lot about what their anxieties are. And especially if they're really worried about STIs, you know, what is it that you're worried about? Where does that come from? Um, we see a lot of people who get really worried when they get an HIV test done because mm. they don't understand HIV as well as what we do. So a lot of people still sort of have that mindset of what people did in the 80s and 90s, where if you get HIV, you're going to die. That's it. Which nowadays you're absolutely not. You know, the reason we say about getting tested regularly is because if somebody finds out they've got HIV early, gets onto the right medication and takes it properly, then they're not going to get sick and they're not expected to die any earlier than if they've mm. never had HIV. And within about six months of taking the medication, we expect people to become undetectable, which means there's no risk of them passing it on to their sexual partners either. Okay. People can still have kids and don't need to worry about passing HIV to the children, yeah. everything like that. So that's a big part of what we do. But in general, just talking to people about what those anxieties are, whatever it is within their sexual health that's causing them anxiety, and sort of help people navigate that a little bit as well. Talk to people about the treatments that are there mm. and, you know, what's curable, what's manageable, everything like that. And kind of do very much the same as well when they see people is to give people the time to sort of talk about what it is that they're worried about. Mm. And then if a test was to come back positive, so with the chlamydia and gonorrhea test that we do, they get sent to Conifer and Conifer deal with the results and getting people in for treatment. And if somebody was to do a HIV or syphilis test with us, that was, we say reactive rather than positive mm. because it has to be confirmed within the GUM clinic. Okay. Um, we offer full support for that as well. So we will take people over to the clinic if they want and go to that appointment with them if they need a bit extra support. Um, and then, especially with a HIV positive result, if they was to get that from the clinic, we have a project that runs with us called Project 100, which is a peer support program. So it's a tailored six sessions that they'll do to get support with somebody who's living with HIV as well. Sort of talk to them more specifically about what their concerns are and helping them to navigate a new diagnosis or changes in treatment, things like that. And there are a few other services that we can refer into as well that offer people support. But if people prefer to get that support from us, then they absolutely can do as well. It's all about what's going to be best for that person, really. Yeah, yeah it's very much on an individual case, absolutely. isn't it? Um, so should we just talk about Shag Week? Yes. Um, so Shag Week is something that we do every year at Hull University Union. Um, it stands for Sexual Health Awareness. Did we decide it was Awareness? Awareness, yes. Awareness and Guidance. Um, so it will be a whole week of testing of um, these talks um, so people can get more information. So what are you guys going to be doing in Shag Week? So we're going to be coming up to the university throughout the week and offering chlamydia and gonorrhea testing. So whether that's those vaginal swab tests, throat swab tests, anal swab tests, or urine sample tests that people need and just really promoting for people to get tested. You know, we're coming and doing it where people are. It makes it a lot easier for them rather than having to traipse all the way into town yeah, to definitely. get tested. And um, we've got a massive amount of tests that we've doing on behalf of Conifer. So a bit of a shout out to Conifer for getting us those tests so quickly. <laughs> Thanks, <Conifer. laughs> um, and yeah, just really pushing people getting tested. Yeah, amazing. So we're also doing the normal competition. Um, so if you're in a sports team or a society and come and get tested, um, it'll get marked down. And the person with, well, the club or society with the highest percentage of members that have been tested will get a prize. And also the one with the um, most amount of people um, that have been tested will also get a prize. So potentially people could be getting two prizes for one team. Absolutely. Which is hopefully will inspire people. Fantastic, yeah. And that's the thing, sometimes 
people might not feel confident in coming to get a test, but then the fact that there's sort of that prize and competition yeah. thing there, they can be kind of like, well, I'm just doing it for the competition. Just that's why I'm doing it. I'm you not worried. Give that the reason yeah. if you want to give that as the reason, that might be the only reason you're doing it anyway. Might be, but you're but, still getting tested, so yeah. that counts. And if you're sexually active, you should be getting tested. Um, we'll be doing full sexual health screening on the Wednesday of Shag Week as well, as we do every Wednesday. So that's testing for HIV, syphilis, chlamydia and gonorrhea. Mm -hmm. um, and then after Shag Week, we've also got National HIV Testing Week, which is a big week where we do a massive push on getting um, HIV testing done. So why do people need to get tested? We do a lot of awareness, but then we also have a lot more opportunity for people to get tested. Um, that week is from the 16th to the 22nd of November. Check us out on Facebook, Yorkshire Mesmark. Check us out on Twitter, Yorkshire Mesmark. We've got a Hull Twitter page as well. So look for Yorkshire Mesmark Hull and go to our website, www.mesmark.co.uk to find out about all the different places that we'll be testing. We'll also share that with you guys. So yeah. you can post that on your I'll social media. everywhere. And if you've got any worries <clears throat> or questions in terms of sexual health as well, give us a call, pop and see us while we're here. Come and talk to somebody, don't just sit with your worries. Let's talk about it. Amazing. All right, well, thank you for chatting to me. Thank you for having me. And thanks for watching. Thank you.